Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session. Project Charter document is the very first document that gets created on any project. And who prepares it? Usually, the project sponsor has to prepare, right? That's the best practice. But uh, in most scenarios, what happens is the project sponsor would ask the project manager to prepare this document. And the project manager has to include the team members while drafting this project charter so that everyone is aware of the proceedings. So this project is machine failure prediction model. OK, building, I would say, building machine learning prediction model. And this is in the space of what? Manufacturing industry. And any specific department? Yes. Uh, within this manufacturing industry, you have a specific department called as um, technical resolution department, where you'll have technicians who will come and fix the issues. Right? And uh, product or process, it's. Uh, not both its project. And we are dealing with data analysis project. Then here, who, who is preparing? You people are preparing, right? You have to give your name. And uh, what is your role? You can mention that you are a data analyst, or you can say that you are a data scientist. For example, I can say, my name is Barani Kumar. I happen to be a data analyst. OK, next. Project charter version, this is very important. You'll be the honor, uh, author as well. And um, other people also can make changes to this. As I've told you, the project charter is created not by individual team members, but by project sponsor. OK, the project sponsor name would be there. And whenever you do small changes to the document, you put it as 1.1, 1.2, et cetera, the date, um, who made the change, and what change did you do? Change the. Milestone details. When did you make that change? Who made that change? In that way, you have to continuously keep adding details. If it's a major change, you have to put instead of one, two, two point oh. Yeah, there's a table of contents. I just updated it. The uh, we we removed the irrelevant sections and we put only the relevant sections. And here we have the project charter description. Why is it used for? What purpose is it used for? Let me tell you that project charter is the first document that gets created on any project, first thing. And uh, second thing is first document, the created on any project, not just this project, on any other project also. This is the first document which gets created. The second thing is. It is created and signed by project sponsor. Project sponsor is a person who promises to give you the desired resources, money, etc. Yeah. That's the ideal scenario. But usually what this project sponsor would say is okay, project manager. Please, can you prepare this document? So project manager, in collaboration with the team members, would create the project charter. But it is recommended that you include your project manager and team members during the project charter creation. Even, even if it is created by a project sponsor, it is always recommended that they include the project manager and team members. That means that the project manager name has to be upfront uh, mention before the project starts. Second thing is, this project charter only contains the high-level documents, high-level details. And this document will go as an input to project management plan which is a detailed document or low level document it will contain the low level details or detailed details okay 
you'll have the high level scope of the project what would you do in that project high level timelines high level money high level risks you know who are the key stakeholders so on and so forth so you have to as part of your project executive summary mention your business problem objective and constraints and the success criteria for data analytics folks machine learning success criteria would not be applicable okay for data analytics people this won't be applicable so i'll just remove that and then you have data collection um, you, in this section, you have to just mention whether you're collecting the data from secondary sources or is the client giving you the data, or are you going to go and get the data from primary sources? You know, you need to mention that. If the client provides you the data, that's called a secondary. And what are the various assumptions? What is the scope? You might do it for the entire organization or for only specific department. You need to mention the details about any of them. Assumptions are as far as a few of the examples is what I've given. You can think about a few more and then fill in the assumptions. Data will be provided by customer is my assumption. Cloud would be provided by the customer. GP would be provided by the customer. In that way, you can list down your assumptions. And then you can also list down the risks. Friends, please remember that there is a difference between risk and an issue. Risk is something which might happen in the future. Okay, it has a probability associated. It may or may not occur in the future. And when risks be become true, or when there is 100% probability associated with a risk, then that would be called as an issue. Issues are dealt using issue management. Risks are dealt using risk management. So a few of the risks that I thought through is that required data might not be available. If it's not available, then your project will be a failure because garbage in, garbage out. If you're dealing with inappropriate data, the results will be incorrect. Server connectivity might be weak. Say you're doing a project in one of those uh, underdeveloped countries and say you want to connect to the server Okay, at that customer location and then work on the database. That would be an overkill, isn't it? <clears throat> when you try to connect to this from your location, probably <clears throat> you'll not be in a position to connect. Then what are the costs associated with the project? Usually how people arrive at the cost is that you look at the number of hours. Say you have a junior data analyst say you have a data architect say you have a database administrator say you have a cloud administrator right for each of these people you figure out how many hours okay number of hours that each person is going to spend and how much will be the hourly money that you're going to charge probably junior data analyst would spend uh, 40 hours 40 human hours, person hours. And maybe you want to charge $10 per hour. So you multiply and do the calculation to arrive at the total cost of the project. Uh, of course, when I say human resources, this is just an example, right? You, you can also include the software licenses, the hardware cost, et cetera. And also you need to provide the high level timeline. For example, <laughs> project will take anywhere between 30 days to 45 days for completion. And then you have approach. Obviously, this is data science, oh, sorry, data analytics project. So you'll have data analytics project management methodology. In that way, you also define the project scope. Uh, within that, you, uh, you, you mention about the project deliverables. And um, I think our friend has shared with me these details. Let me open that. Sorry, just give me a moment. Did I stop sharing the screen? Yep. Just give me a moment while I download the file.
Okay, fine. So, milestone. Um, I mean, every small task that you complete, you cannot consider that as a milestone. Milestone means you would have achieved something significant. So identifying the constraints, designing the pro uh, project architecture, exploring the various public forums to collect the data, right? data pre-processing, all these things would be part of probably phase one. Okay, And then uh, I will put EDA here. <clears throat> or I'll not even put that. Okay. And then you perform probably EDA and a descriptive analytics, probably that could be phase two. Let me see data preparation. Usually data preparation and EDA go hand in hand. And usually post EDA, if you mention about data preparation, it will start making slightly more sense. So what I'll do is better I bring it down here. Mm -hmm. What happened? I'm unable to insert a line here. Yeah, yeah. So you can get a naming convention is very important, my dear friend. So this I would call it as the point one. Okay, since you call it as three point one. The deliverables here would become 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay. So what all uh, you're going to perform, right? That would come up here. I, I would take this out. Descriptive analytics would. Uh, mm, Okay, seems like it doesn't fit in well here. So let me take here only for now. We would uh, eventually try to see how to bring in more structure to this. Okay. So I'm taking this deliverable back, by the way. Okay, deliverable 1.3. After this, um, you need to mention what are the deliverables out of scope. You need not build a web application or a mobile application, and you need not do cloud based deployment. And in project duration, you'll have the start date and an end date of your project. Okay. And you mentioned these details. Say 15 you started, right? And the end date will be after 20 years. So you mention all of these things, the same deliverables. How confident are you that you'll be able to meet the timelines? Right? If if it's medium, then what are the risks that you foresee? Medium or low? And then you have certain assumptions, project-related assumptions, like uh, data would be extracted from public sources, and then client-provided data would be mapped. And finally, you get one master data, which will be shared by InnoDataTics with you for further analysis. Dashboards and insights are mandatory. Okay, And whatever project issues that you come across, as and how you progress on the project, you mention those. And who is the owner of that particular issue? Who is going to resolve that? What is the status? Is it still open or closed? If it's closed, what resolution was provided in that? Way? And then you also have project risks. At the beginning itself, you identify. But on an ongoing basis, you are going to identify more risks. Okay, So it is a living document, project charter. And project references, if there are any previous projects you have done in the past, you need to mention those details and the description of the same. And it's prepared, prepared, right? You have to give the name of that person. Usually it's prepared by the project sponsor only. But in some cases, 
they request project manager to create and project sponsors will approve. All right. This is in short. We are going to upload this uh, updated document. Mm -hmm. There was a slight change in the initial sections. So I'll do one thing and just copy this part. And then I'll be pleased with this. Yeah. Meanwhile, while I do this, do you have any questions? Okay. Ask if you have any questions, please. No questions? So this is how you need to fill this particular document. No, not individually, Siti, but uh, based on the discussions that we have here, you will be able to, you know, gauge or understand whether you're doing well or not, and you can do the course correction. Yes, someone was asking a question. Sir. No, just now someone asked us how the listener. Sorry, sir. 